Hello, hello. It's Jacob Hill with GRC Academy. Today, I'm here with Mr. Brian Kowalski. Brian, how are you today? Oh, I'm great, Jacob. Thanks again for uh, having us here today. And it's great to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you too. Thank you so much for coming on. And folks, if you're enjoying the podcast, please take a moment to like, comment, share, subscribe, review, all the things that really helps me out. Thanks in advance. Well, every once in a while, I come across a product that really makes me think of all kinds of use cases. So I wanted to share it with you all today. The product is called Hypori Halo. But first, before we dive in, Brian, tell us about yourself. How did you get to where you are today? Oh, my goodness. That's a long and sordid story. But no, I joined the Army at a young age and used the Army to give me some direction and found my way into the defense industry base after 10 years. Worked my way up all the way from network administrator all the way to program manager, and also started working within the executive offices with some of the companies. And so it's been an awesome journey along the way. I've done professional services, I've done product sales, and always from a mission perspective and always looking for ways to integrate and benefit the DOD and the IC. What do you do today? So today I'm lucky enough to be the Senior Vice President of Federal here at Hypori. So I execute all federal sales start to finish. Tell us about Hypori. How did Hypori Halo actually start? About 10 years ago, a little longer, the National Security Agency was looking for a way to access their classified networks from inside the building mm-hmm. using tablets or smartphones. And so they started this journey looking for ways to do this in you know what today we call zero trust, right? But back then that term hadn't been created yet. They stumbled upon a little startup company out of Austin, Texas, who had this capability to connect to a virtual Android operating system. And that is where it all began. And then Over time, we were introduced to the Commercial Solutions for Classified program office. We learned how we could integrate our product within the mobile access capability package. And then before we knew it, we got NIAP certified. We got our product registered with NSA CSFC. And before too long, Special Operations Command and its components started showing a lot of interest and ended up procuring our product. So it was very exciting. And over time, the light bulb that went off for everyone was, well, hey, CSFC is great and we're we're seeing a lot of traction, but what if we could simplify how users access the Nippernet or Unclass Net? And, you know, even today still, there are very expensive solutions that are provided in order to do that. But we realized we were onto something. And of course, today, we all know that the Army is one of the largest consumers of our product to date, enabling soldiers, civilians, and contractors in the Army, National Guard, and Reserves to access the Army.mil domain. So Mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting for us. Well, give us a rundown on what Hypori Halo actually does does and how it works. Hypori Halo is really just our version of Android. As you know, Android is open source, and so you can customize Android to fit your needs. And so what we learned a long time ago is that we could take Android apart and rebuild it to operate in a server and not in the constraint of a physical device, whether that's a tablet or a smartphone. What that allows you to do is simply send video pixels from that server to the physical device, and you interact with it by capturing the touches and external inputs and sending those back to the server to be interpreted in near real time. If you think about when this technology started, 3G was the only thing that was around and 4G was still in lab testing. It was built to be very resilient, very fault tolerant. It did always need a connection to connect to that server, but all that communication to that server is encrypted, very fault tolerant. And so it allowed a user to interact with this virtual Android device. And the beauty is you can do it from any smartphone, tablet, laptop, or desktop that runs iOS, Android, and Windows. Everything from the server to the physical endpoint is encrypted inside of a TLS 1.2 tunnel, the same protocol used for encrypted browsing. Again, we're only pushing pixels to the physical endpoint and allowing the user to interact with that environment. The beauty of that is all that data stays in your secure data center. Nothing ever comes down to the device. The user can't download anything. They can't transfer anything from the virtual device to the physical device. Because in our security architecture profile, we look at the physical device as being hostile to us. So we give it just enough permission to be able to transmit information to us securely. 
You mentioned that folks can also use it from their Windows devices. Talk to us about that. I, I think it was maybe five years ago, one of our longtime customers had come to us and said, I would love to be able to have a mobile interface that I can interact with and access from any device. And of course, as is typical in the federal government, Microsoft Windows desktops are just about everywhere. And so that really spawned the idea of having to build a Windows client. So it's a client just like our current iOS and Android client that you install on the Windows desktop. And then from there, you interact with Hypori as you would from your mobile device. You double click, launch the app, select your profile, use the authentication mechanism for that particular profile. And within a few short seconds, you're logged into your virtual Android device. Can you speak to us about MDM and how this is different? MDM tries to manage the physical endpoint and tries to control the user's behavior. They take over the device. They control the device. Some tools out there only take over certain applications. The principle is the same. The device has to be registered within the MDM or the MAM in order to give it access. The physical endpoints, they're out in the wild somewhere. You don't always know where they are. And you're hoping that what little management you're able to execute over that physical device, that it's doing its job. And unfortunately, MDMs are constantly bypassed, constantly broken into and users do with the physical devices what they want. The Allure is really about being able to monitor and control that virtual device using your enterprise tools versus trying to control an end user device with tools that are very invasive, slow the device down, and cause a lot of friction points for users, both from a usability and from a privacy perspective. What configuration options are there for access controls when you actually open the Hypori app? So before you can even open the Hypori app, you have to authenticate into the environment. So mm -hmm. that can be anything from a PIN to a password to a 2FA or an MFA generator. We can integrate with any of those. And then once you get connected past that first stage, now you're essentially accessing an Android operating system. You can set it to prompt for a PIN, no different than you would log in to a physical Android device. What if the user loses their device? Well, as sad as that is for the user, <laughs> it's irrelevant to us, right? Okay. Unfortunately for the user, yes, they probably lost a couple hundred dollars or more worth of plastic and hardware, but the data, it's still secure in the Hypori environment. It hasn't gone anywhere. And so when the user calls the help desk and says, hey, I lost my phone or I can't find my phone, we can pause their device. Or if they're absolutely certain that their device is unrecoverable, we can revoke their certificate. And then when they get a new smartphone or tablet or whatever the case may be, once we validate that the user says who or he or she says they are, then we'll go ahead and provision a new certificate so they can get back into their account. The beauty is, from our perspective, nothing is lost because the data is still secure in the data center. So one other question I have, the compute, where is that? Is that in Azure AWS or is that in your own a data center somewhere? The neat thing is it can be where you want it to be. So we obviously have a commercial SaaS offering that we offer in AWS today. We can also offer it in Azure. We recently received our provisional authority from DISA to be an IL-4 and IL-5 SaaS provider, but that is exclusively done in AWS. We don't do that in Azure today. For those legacy approaches that are still required to have on-prem hardware, we can install on on-prem hardware as well. And I did read that the Army has red teamed this application to death and I guess they didn't really have any serious findings. Is, is that right? That is correct. Yeah. The Army has red teamed us, I believe, three times and other services and agencies have as well. And there's never been any significant findings. Well, this is very interesting because for me as a defense contractor, like, you know, we're dealing with NIST 800-171 and CMMC, and I can see some amazing use cases here for folks what are your plans for the CMMC space? We're currently working with several companies that are well known throughout the defense industry base, and they're looking at integrating our product into their environment. 
not everyone in the div is a billion dollar business, right? The the div mm-hmm. is mainly supported by small businesses that mm-hmm. make the system work. And mm-hmm. so the idea of having to have two separate environments or make the critical decision to take their IT environment from a standard to a GCC high, that's a costly endeavor, right? And especially with all of the requirements to harden their internal networks, harden their desktops and whatever local servers they have. It is a large undertaking and of course a costly undertaking. And then, you know, on top of that, when you get that GCC high email service, those endpoints have to meet certain requirements in order to interact with that environment. The awesome thing about getting approved to be an IL4 SaaS provider is we've made it easy for you, right? You can have an Hypori IL-4 environment that seamlessly connects to that GCC high email service. Mm-hmm. And now you don't have to worry about a separate smartphone that you use to access that environment. Well, let's talk about licensing and pricing. What does that look like? Yeah, so our pricing is actually really simple. It's $300 per user per year with as many devices as you want to enroll in the capability. That's really the basis of it. Our IL-4 and IL-5 SaaS environment is a little more expensive given the amount of certification and security that sits in front of that service. Right. But I believe the list price of that is 365 per user per year. Okay. It's important to note that that includes cloud cost, right? So we're not going to charge you extra for cloud. That's embedded within the cost of our licensing. And is there a minimum, a minimum number of users that you would have to meet to onboard a customer? Yeah. So especially following the rules of SaaS, we try to maximize the use of our compute capability, especially within cloud. We definitely look for hundred user minimums when it comes to the buys, but exceptions can always be made depending on the use case. This has been very, very interesting. I'm so thankful for your time. Where can people find you? Yeah, Jacob, this has been great. Thanks again for having me. And of course, you can find us at www.hypori.com. You can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and even Instagram. Type it in your favorite search engine. You'll find us. Excellent. Thank you again for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. 